Joining us today is Dennis Campbell. He is editor-in-chief of UK Progressive Magazine, also the ho host of Worldview with Dennis Campbell on YouTube at youtube.com slash worldviewshow and BookView on YouTube, youtube.com slash bookviewtv. Dennis, there's a huge anti-fracking protest that is developing over on your side of the Atlantic Ocean. Let's talk first about the details. Where is this happening? Who is protesting? Well, we, we've um, had a situation going on in the community of Balcom. That's B-A-L-C-O-M-B-E, and that's located in the county of West Sussex. West Sussex is in South eastern England. It's all the way down near Hastings, where the Battle of Hastings was fought in 1066. And the, the oil giant Quadrilla has been granted permission to begin an exploratory drig, uh, drilling rig for fracking, which is hydraulic fracturing. And there's a group of protesters, and uh, it's, it's really been pretty much countrywide. But over the last several days, they've gained national attention for their efforts to stop the Quadrilla trucks from actually entering the site. So they've formed human chains, blockades, everything you can think of. We talked, I think it was a couple, two or three weeks ago, I think two weeks ago, actually, maybe it was three, what with my vacation in the middle, about fracking. And we talked a little bit about potential differ differences in awareness of fracking in the U.S. versus in the U.K. Uh, what's your sense of the kind of information level of a lot of these protesters when it comes to a lot of eco-type protesting, in the U.S. anyway, there's a pretty broad range of information levels of how informed people are when they are protesting. Have, have interviews been given with the, the protesters? What do we know about the individuals? Well, you know, it was interesting because they, the, the media, of course, the, the corporate media tried to portray them as the usual cast of characters. But as people began to dig deeper, they realized that it was mostly uh, residents of the of the area of of, of, of Balcom and, and the nearby towns. Now that's a largely conservative or Tory uh, community and area. And people are beginning to start to pay attention to this issue. It's the sort of thing that nobody really knows much about until it starts to affect them. So yes, it's a bit of NIMBY, not in my backyard, but people are only made aware when it occurs near them. The interesting thing about what's happened with the, we call them now the Balcom 16. These 16 people were arrested and they were set upon by a rather thuggish group of police who used um, you know, highly trained uh, pressure release tactics at the base of the neck and the, 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 the bottom of the skull to get people in excruciating pain to then release and then allow themselves to be arrested. But in true form of, of both Gandhi and Dr. King, nobody fought. They were just sitting there peacefully with arms locked and they had to be dragged away and arrested. This, of course, now has gained the attention of virtually every media outlet here now that the royals have done their job and produced an heir. And suddenly people were beginning to say, well, what is this fracking about? It didn't help that the uh, police did the torture, uh, torture sort of moved there with the pressure point. It didn't help that on Channel 4, uh, one of our major news sources here in the country, that the energy minister went on and in response to a question about earthquakes uh, said, well, that won't be allowed here in the UK. I'll let that one sink in for a second. <laughs> And then it didn't help that Lord Howells, who just happens to be the father-in-law of the Chancellor of the Exchequer, uh, a man by the, by the name of George Osborne, who is very decidedly pro-fracking, is also very tightly connected to the oil and gas industry. And he's made a right ass of himself over the last several days in the media by basically saying, well, you know, we've got so much desolate areas up in the northeastern part of England, there should be no problem, you know, with drilling up there. And then, of course, he tried to correct and save himself today by saying, well, I didn't mean the northeast, I meant the northwest. So now he's managed to tick off an even broader uh, array of people. And this morning, a group of uh, protesters have somehow found an old fire engine and they pulled that fire <laughs> engine in front of the gates of the Quadrilla mining site and they've chained themselves to the inside of the fire truck. So unless they figure out how they can tow a fire truck away, nothing's going on to the site today. So it's really been quite entertaining, but also very, very important because people are beginning to gain awareness that they would not have gained otherwise. Right. And as we know, the reality with, with all of these situations is that if we were to focus from the get go 
on alternative energy rather than playing this game of trying to keep pushing here and there to do a little bit more with, uh, with, with fossil fuels, we could be in a completely different place. I mean, George W. Bush, certainly in the U.S., had the chance to become kind of like the, the energy president, didn't do it. President Obama had that renewed opportunity at the beginning of his first term and really second term. There's really no true indication. There have been some things done, tax credits here and there, but there's not really been a broad move from Well, I mean, I have to I have to take exception there when you say that George Bush could have become the energy president because his vice president used to head up Halliburton, which are the largest manufacturer of fracking fluid. So no one is committed to doing anything but drill baby drill. And that's coming home to roost because fully one third of the British government's cabinet, and this has come to light in the last day or so in the media, are very tightly connected personally. They have very strong personal interest in the oil and gas industry. No, no question about it. And when I said George Bush could have done it, I meant it from a timing standpoint in terms oh, of yeah. the technology was moving ahead and and certainly in part because because his number two was was Halliburton uh, uh, Halliburton involved. That was one of the things that kept it from happening. What's on the horizon quickly to kind of sum up in terms of more or less fracking fracking going forward or fracking being prevented in the UK? Well, I think that the fact that you've got this relatively conservative Tory community pretty much up in arms at what this Tory government is doing, that's significant. Also, something that's beginning to get some play, and I think will get more play over on your side of the pond, is the uh, recent decision by a local bank to deny a couple in Western Pennsylvania who are on that uh, um, what the, the, the mass uh, shale gassing, they didn't get their home mortgage because they were located in a shale gas area. Now, that was uh, reported on WTAE television in Western Pennsylvania. It's a significant economic bit of news because once you begin to talk to people about the value of their own home, I don't care where you are, whether you're in the West Midlands or on the West Coast of the United States, States, people will pay attention if they see the value of their property decrease and they see banks unwilling to lend mortgages to actually, you know, help them to, to, to acquire a home. So that's the most significant bit of news in the last 48 hours, and it's come from over there. Plus, there's a huge amount of activity going on right now in Australia. They've pretty much destroyed the province of Queensland, and now New South Wales is sort of drawing a line in the sand, just as folks have done in Balcom and said, not here. And I think the more people start to do that, the more organized they become, the less likely you're to see fracking succeed on the scale of which it has in parts of the United States. All right, Dennis Campbell, editor-in-chief of UK Progressive Magazine. Check out youtube.com slash worldview show and youtube.com. By the way, David, we also, we also had an interview with one of the 16 who were arrested on worldview show. So I encourage your visitors, your, your, your uh, viewers to come and take a peek at that. All right, we'll be taking a look. Dennis, thanks as always. We will talk to you next week. Thank you.